So we have done the molecular solids, non-polar molecular solids. We saw that they are non-polar molecular solids, polar molecular solids, hydrogen bond molecular solids. Now we come to the second in line. We had seen, we had said there will be four, right? So this is second. Second is the ionic solid. The ionic solid. As the name suggests, what happens? They are composed of ions. Okay. Now, what happens? They are composed of ions. Okay, ions. That is both cation and cations and anions, right? And anions. In such a manner that in such a manner that that the cations and anions anions form a matrix okay in three dimension in three dimension and are held together by strong coulombic attraction they are held together by a strong coulombic attraction now again it is this force which will define everything else for this so what does it do since since the electrostatic forces are so 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 very strong we have seen if you compare it to maybe you take two protons or a proton and an electron you compare the gravitational force you compare the electrostatic force you know what the ratio is any idea no if i find out the electrostatic force between a proton and an and an electron separated by a distance of say 1 meter and the gravitational force between them the the ratio of the electrostatic force that means the electrostatic force becomes at least 10 to the power 37 times stronger than a gravitational force this is a huge tremendous tremendous force okay so so this force when 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 this 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 force acts so this makes the this makes the solids solids what number one what will it make it first of all hard okay so this leads to the following characteristics this leads to the following characteristics number one the solid is hard okay they are tightly bound is hard and dense the density goes up right due to the attraction what next what is the second thing that that you think will happen will it be a conductor will it be a conductor in the solid state no why mm. in solid state in solid state it will be it will be a bad conductor just try to understand it will be a bad conductor why 
because the ions the charges will not be able to flow okay as the charges can't flow can't move i'll say but in molten or the aqueous solution when the solution state they are very good conductors of electricity in in aqueous or molten state they are very good conductors of electricity they are very very good conductors of electricity okay now why why does that happen see first of all you melt them then what happens the coulombic attraction we had seen that any solid that has got two 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 anti forces right one is the force that bring uh, tries to bring them together another is that which takes them apart that is normally thermal now if you start heating what happens the thermal winds and it pulls them apart now the in the molten state if they are molten the intermolecular distances become higher and they are able to flow irrespective of being attracted and once the separation starts the positive goes to the cathode the negative goes to the anode correct so 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 and in aqueous as we'll study what happens the moment you put water which has got a dielectric constant of somewhere about 60 so what does it do it makes the coulombic forces lesser by 60 times the moment it seeps in the forces get down go down and water itself is polar so then it pulls them apart okay they are also charged water itself is polar so it applies a field okay so it is that which is able to bring them apart so they become good conductors of electricity fine they have got very high boiling and melting points very high melting point right also boiling point because after after you try to boil after you melting it right melting is something else solution is something else very high melting point and boiling point okay high melting and boiling points Okay